Hello and welcome. This is contrary to what the background says, Americans learn. Um, my name is Lauren and today I'm going to be looking at a tear zoo video. This is how cats broke the game. You know, I enjoy learning about how cats are OP. I've seen a bunch of casual geographic videos about it. Maybe even another tear zoo one about it, but I'm very excited. Um, we are under this particular uh, background for me today because I um, in order to try and clear up some space, I broke everything, as you do. So we are in the process of rebuilding all of the backgrounds and presets and audio and everything. So things are going to be a little bit weird. And I apologize for that. Also, there may or may not be commercials, like little ads that show up uh, from the video itself, not just me putting them in um so there will be some weird cuts and edits for that because even though i'm paying for premium it's not working so apologies for all of the technical issues um and thank you for sticking with me um until we can get this resolved um until that time i'm going to do my best and hopefully it is passable. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at. We're going to watch this uh, How Cats Broke the Game. And thank you again for your patience during this difficult time. Two, one, go! Good job. This game's tier list can seem pretty set in stone sometimes, but in reality, major shifts in the meta can happen extremely quickly, especially when new resource hotspots and points of interest open up. Builds which are well adapted to capitalize on these flashpoints can see dramatic ascensions on the tier list. I've seen this that particular clip before of the seagull stealing the thing, but right <laughs> the other day at work, this pigeon just strolled into the restaurant like he owned the place. Everyone that was there was just kind of like all the customers were just like, did I just, is that P pit? Yes. And we were like, yep, yeah, uh, that is in fact what happened. So we, we just, it was, I don't know what was wrong. It was, it was really chill. It let us pick it up and move it back outside. It didn't like freak out too badly. So it was, it was just kind of funny though. <laughs> just wanders right on in. One such event occurred when humans unlocked the food storage ability. Mm. This greatly improved the humans' survivability by giving them a consistent source of XP even during harsh winters or famines. That is, if they could defend their stockpiles. These stashes were incredibly valuable and could easily support entire uh! cats and sparrows if improperly guarded. And while these Neolithic humans did have some techniques they could use to try and Neolithic people stored grain in clay pots, baskets, and pits dug deep into the ground. Cool. It would be cooler. Protect their precious grain on their own. Ultimately, their saving grace came in the form of a previously low-tier predator build that was barely scraping by in the North African savanna. The Wildcat. A build which, once domesticated, would go on to become one of the most oppressive, overpowered predators <laughs> in the current meta. But what is it about the house cat that makes it such a dominant threat? And how was it that the wildcat became better suited at taking advantage of pest infestations than other builds? To really explain the success of the house cat, we need to go way back and start our story just after the Let's go. balance patch. This update granted mammals access to a new ability called Carnassal Teeth, a side grade of the dentition skill tree, which allows users to gain bonus XP from carcasses and carrion sources. This may seem like a minor thing, but it completely changed up the metagame and made hyper-carnivorous builds a lot more viable. Okay. Rise to a new archetype called the Carnivoran, a group which includes many of the most popular predator builds in the current meta. Carnivorans are divided into two factions, Caniforms and Feliforms. Canifor okay. That is interesting. All right. I hadn't considered that. It's only really two. Dogs and cats, that's what we get. Forms are more generalist in nature and invest a lot into the old faction skill tree, letting them track the sense of whatever they need. Be it scavenge will carry on, prey, fruit, honey, water, or teammates from a great distance. They also tend to have a lot of stamina, allowing them to run for long distances without tiring. 
Good job, puppy. On the other hand, doubled down on the Carnivoran archetype's original strategy. They specced into even more abilities meant to crank up the efficiency of the hyper carnivore game plan. The ability Tongue Papillae allows Felids to extract even more value from fresh kills. Instead of investing heavily into scent based sensory power, Feliforms tend to focus more on their hearing and eyesight abilities. This doesn't help them scatter. I do appreciate the like sonic blast that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> since things like carcasses and berries don't make sound, but it does make them incredibly good at detecting hidden prey. Also, in keeping with the Carnivoran's first major advancement, Feliforms also focus a lot more heavily on specialized dentition, optimizing their bite attacks to deal massive puncture damage. Why would you let the tiger just gnaw at your wrist? That seems like a bad idea. And more effectively hold on to prey so the user can deal bonus damage with their claw. That thing is huge! Throw in a few more ambush focused abilities like retractable claws and camouflage fur patterns, and you've arrived at the modern Felid, easily one of the most successful stealth assassin builds the game has ever seen. In <laughs> during the Ice Age expansion, Felids were such a dominant threat that many other Predator builds had trouble competing with them at all. In the current meta, cats remain incredibly dominant in virtually every major terrestrial server. Basically every cat, including the ones I like to throw shade at, is a threat. Not just to those of similar weight class, but even to builds that vastly outweigh them. Oh! Although their power stat tends to be fairly modest among carnivorans, through efficient use of critical- Toad Snake Chimera. <laughs> that was great. Look at that. Toad Snake Chimera. <laughs> this snake is not having a good day, is it? <laughs> Their power stat tends to be fairly modest. Toads eat snakes? What is that thing? That's monstro That's a monstrosity right there. Poor, poor snake is really having a bad day. Among carnivorans, through efficient use of critical hits, a skilled Felid player can take down just about anything. While the majority of the Felid player base was off rampaging through the upper weight classes, an offshoot of the faction opted to forego larger size and instead chose to, to a few new abilities meant to capitalize on exploiting the weaknesses commonly found in the lower weight classes. So let's finally start off <laughs> what makes the house cat so overpowered. We'll begin with a quick look at the cat's stats. We've got a build with upper mid-level intelligence, low defensive stats, decent damage, above average stealth, high mobility, and excellent perception. Right off the bat, Something that might jump out at you is, well, the fact that nothing jumps out at you. Cats are supposedly some of the most broken predators of all time, and yet none of their stats seems all that busted on their own. Yeah. Their builds tend to have at least one stat that is so high it completely invalidates the strategies of other players. But no, cats aren't able to use two- Look at a monkey! The orangutan driving a truck. Look at him go. Ah! Good job, orangutan. I saw a joke recently that was like the only reason <laughs> orangutans don't like it was not necessarily a joke but it was it was a joke um it's like the the reason that orangutans don't do more is because they don't want to be put to work uh you know it's like clearly this one has learned how to drive a golf cart you know and also it's like they do there's orangutans are so effing smart but they they're like i'm just gonna sit here and chill and um ignore everything i'm not gonna learn sign language <laughs> i don't want you to put me to work they know they know they don't have a bone crushing or venomous bite they can't change colors they can't tank attacks for days they can't echo locate and so on so no obvious answer here next let's check out their unique abilities we talked about a few already, including the abilities that buff the XP rates from meat sources. These should not be understated, as without them you can pretty much entirely write off the viability of this build. Cats and all other mammals have the warm-blooded trait. This grants them greatly improved stamina regen rates, greater resistance to cold damage, and a bunch of other useful perks, but at the cost of much greater upkeep requirements, meaning they need to secure kills much more frequently than similarly sized cold-blooded builds. Without these abilities granting the cat bonus XP from meat, it would be very difficult Sorry, fish. to keep up with their energy needs, even with how efficient cats are at hunting. Cats can also move extremely quietly due to their soft toe pads and retractable claws, enabling them to easily get within striking range of prey through smart use of cover and line of sight. But okay, <laughs> all types of cat, large and small, have those abilities. How about something more unique to house cats? 
For that, let's look at the- Oh my god, that would be terrifying. You go to just like, you're in a public trash can, you go to throw something away, and suddenly a cat just launches itself at you? No thank you. I freak out when that happens to me and it's a bird. Perception-based ability, slitted pupils. This ability grants house cats extremely precise depth perception, greater than all other feelers. This allows them to perfectly judge the optimal pouncing distance, massively increasing their odds of landing an immediate critical hit and incapacitating their target before it has a chance to respond. So even though the house cat's base damage isn't broken, get out of here, fox! Itself, when a house cat goes on the offensive, it can certainly look that way. This strategy is what has led to the complete. There's that freaking huge toad again. What kind of toad is that? What is that? Is that a cane toad? I don't know, but like that is a monster freaking. Thingy. ...of several different player bases in the amphibian, reptile, bird, and mammal factions, as it truly is that oppressive. Now, while we were first looking at the cat's base stats, one thing you might have assumed right away was that the cat's lower defensive stats are its main weakness, and that cats function as a sort of glass cannon, with very little counterplay options when attacked. You might also assume that given the cat's high mobility, their primary defensive strategy is simply to run away when they feel threatened. And while their top speed is often enough to escape danger when needed, instead, cats employ their mobility stat defensively in a different way. This is where one of the most shockingly effective aspects of the house cat manifests. Jeez. House cats use their incredible agility to stand their ground. Agility and quick reflexes are usually used to dodge attacks, but cats instead actually use their reflexes to deflect them. Because nice. Of incredible depth ah, ooh, got it. Such high accuracy on their attacks, they can use their claw swipe attack to actually block incoming strikes. This is surprisingly consistent and works on a lot more attacks than you might think. Okay. Now, obviously, this. I, I, you know what? Just a little smackaroony. Someone startles you. I mean, honestly, though, I freaking did that the other day, kind of. My my friend came over. Um, if you've seen any of the Shikaname videos, you'll see. You'll know Jessica. She came over and I, I didn't. I didn't know she was in the house. She like she snuck into my room and she like shouted. And my immediate response was I like, chambered for a kick. I was like ah ah. <laughs> I I almost got her too, but I like I noticed who she was. Like what was going on at <laughs> right th the last second. But I was like I was ready to lay down smack her out of the way she was like ready to go <laughs> oops don't sneak up on me uh alec who you will also know if you watched any of the shikaname videos uh the black clover recently um or if you're over on patreon he he came up behind me at work one time and like went like this into my ribs and you know I punched him in the solar plexus hard enough that he still talks about it four years later. <laughs> I'll get you. This is a high skill, high reward strategy. Missing a parry can result in serious damage. But if you get good enough at this, you can ward off attacks from just about anything and potentially even open up opportunities for counterattacks. Put all this together and you come to understand what a house cat build truly is. A house cat is what you get when you fuse the deadliness of a snake with the energy of a mammal. <laughs> But why does this playstyle make for such a good partnership with human players? Compared to dogs, they seem like they'd be much less useful party members. Humans broke the game and became the top tier build by using coordinated team strategies and tool use in order to utterly trivialize their matchup versus large mammals. Dogs easily slot right into this game plan as they can help track and chase down large prey and also sniff out any potential ambush predators that could disrupt and punish this strategy. When a successful kill is made, dogs and humans naturally split the reward and both benefit. Dogs are also great defensively as they can keep watch at camp and alert party members of approaching enemies. Cats are generally pretty useless in this regard. They don't have anywhere near the endurance required to chase down prey over long distances can't square off head-to-head -head with those builds anyway, and aren't nearly as reliable for early enemy alerts. <laughs> the kills the cat makes can't realistically be shared with humans either. It wasn't until humanity unlocked the agriculture ability that the player base began to notice additional vulnerabilities they didn't need to care about before. Vulnerabilities that dogs couldn't really help with. When operating off of a hunter-gatherer strategy, humans could basically ignore all builds in the low weight class. Rats and birds were no threat to humans, and also not worth the effort. Aww, poor rat. So it makes sense for them <laughs> Kick. to focus on larger quarries. However, when the focus shifts to farming and food storage, those same builds humans were ignoring before suddenly became one of their biggest threats. Having a granary raided and its food reserves destroyed could easily wipe out an entire human settlement. 
so figuring out proper security for these storage sites was critical. Dogs simply are not effective enough at stopping pests <laughs> to fill that role. They cannot climb or fit into small spaces and aren't stealthy enough to catch the trickier pests. Cats, on the other hand, are truly excellent at this task. Yes, get him, get him. Benefits as well. The main one being that they require very little upkeep. Although they are social builds, they hunt alone, so they don't require any direction or attention from their human party members in order to accomplish their task. Dang. Since humans don't have any need for rat or bird carcasses, the fact that cats don't usually share their kills is actually a benefit rather than a drawback. The only thing cats really require from humans is to share in the shelters they construct. In the wilderness, cats typically use burrows, hollow stumps, or caves as their home bases. But these are vulnerable to attacks. Human settlements are significantly safer. Whee! Speaking of safety, even though cats are extremely lethal hunters, <laughs> they pose very little danger to humans. This is a huge advantage. I mean, I have been bit by a cat before. It was not fun. You know? Because cats will do that thing where, like, they want to be pet and they want to be pet and they want to be pet and they want to be pet. And then they don't want to be pet. But they don't tell you. <laughs> at least I've never owned a cat, so I'm not, oh, I'm not great at parsing all of the, like, tiny, tiny little details about when exactly they're ready to be done. Um, so... I've been, I've been, I mean, like, you know, just not the really, like, harsh chompy chompies, but, like, it's got, it got me. Snakes, which theoretically could ally with humans to serve the same purpose, but in practice are far too dangerous to risk keeping around. The fact that cats are warm-blooded and therefore need to eat more frequently than snakes is also a benefit rather than a drawback for humans, since it means they need to stay on task and keep the guard up. So, while it is common to see players debate which build makes for the better addition to a human player's party, the correct answer is actually both. Dogs are a huge help in the large creature matchup, while cats cover your weaknesses in the small creature matchups. Having both in your party covers all of your weaknesses mm, and enables human settlements to use a hybrid playstyle of both hunting and farming. So, if you're a human main trying to construct mm. the most optimal party comp, the only real question is how you'll keep the dog and cat players from fighting each other. Now, knowing which traits and abilities to invest in can be a difficult choice. I mean, you get them both early and you raise them together so they learn to be friends. Luckily for you, I've partnered with the game Cell to Singularity to provide you the perfect training simulation. Cell to Singularity is a scientifically accurate, non-fiction, idle clicker game where you begin as a single cell and have to unlock traits to evolve your biology, increase your intellect, and invent new technology in order to conquer the universe and reach the ultimate singularity point. It's a relentlessly fun idle game that had me hooked for weeks. I love the charming low-poly 3D animals that you unlock as you progress through the Tree of Life. In fact, I like this game so much that we actually decided to partner up and build an entirely new limited-time oh, cool. expansion, focused entirely on exploring the adaptations that allowed cats to conquer the planet. It's free to play and available on Steam, iOS, and Android. We worked closely together on this cat event, so see if you can recognize and remember some of the important special abilities that I mentioned as you play through it. If you do manage to get far enough in this event, you'll even unlock a special Tirzu themed badge, which will permanently give your simulation a valuable speed buff. Oh, cool! So please do check this one out, because I genuinely have never been so excited for a brand partnership before. This one really is special to me, and I guarantee you'll have fun playing Zelda Singularity. Again, it is completely free to play, so click or tap on the link in the description, or scan the QR code on screen now. Thanks again for watching, and as always, good luck out there! Ooh, pretty! Look at the sky! Okay, I keep trying to go for the stop. Oh my god, I'm gonna. Anyway, I keep trying to go for my little like <laughs> my little box that like is supposed to my OBS my stream deck. I keep trying to go for that, and it's not working right now, so I can't, and I keep forgetting. So anyway, um, I so fun, very fun. I like Tier Zoo, um, and I love cats, so. This was fun for me. Again, I'm sorry about any um, issues there with the uh, the audio. That again, I'm going to be doing my very best to fix. Um, and also the ads, which is just annoying. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out because, like, I know that we pay for YouTube Premium, but I cannot. It's not working right now. So that's what's happening. And um, 
thanks for your patience once again, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.